Oh, good afternoon, sir. You must be Mr. Joe Public. Uh, yes, if you could like to uh, to step in, you do have an appointment in the Totally Awesome Workshop. Come through, and we're going to be talking about your problem. And your problem, sir, is you like fishing too much, and I'm the man to help you out. Come into the office. Well, then, sir, do come in and uh, feel free to take a seat somewhere. Now, today we're going to be discussing your problem that you keep wanting to go down the south coast of England, catching the legendary place. And I know what your problem is. You want to catch plenty of big plays and you want to go to the secret spot where all the plays have just been found called Bogner off the Sussex coastline. Well, I'll try and help you out where I can. But what you're going to need first are some of these. Yes, wire coat hangers. My trusty old friend for saving me money and catching me fish. I'm going to be making a mega boom and trust me, it works as we'll show you later. Come on, let's have a look at it. Now then, what we're going to be doing is taking a coat hanger like this. This is a really quick, simple, easy way to make these, well, spreader booms is what I call them. Pair of pliers with good side cutting edges, pop, one done. Take off the neck of the coat hanger. Good job, I've had some Weetabix today. Look at that power in those wrists, it's unbelievable. We won't say I've got that power in the wrist, but still. Straighten all this wire out. Straighten all the wire out like this and you will get possibly a good meter. Now, place love anything bright. So I'm actually using, and I'm changing this now, from ordinary coat hanger wire to white, because I think anything that's on the bottom is going to be seen by our friend the place. Phase two, watch closely, get yourself a swivel, and just thread the swivel onto the end there, it's a link swivel, we can have a clip swivel just like that, link or clip, link or a clip, it makes no difference at all. Slide it to the middle of the wire, bend the right wire around there like this in a loop, and I'll just close it right down, squeezing it all the way there, tight, just nip it up with the pliers, make a, an overhand look, look at that, oh beautiful. Now that I'm going to use to tie on my fishing line up here, and clip my lead on the middle there and you can just bend these round at 90 degrees, straighten them out and all you need to do then is barrel swivel on each end and then the trace and the hook and you are, you're nearly ready to go fishing. Here we go. Okay there you can see it's where we're going to clip the lead just on here. So at the other end, dead easy, just slide on an ordinary swivel, barrel swivel like this, and I'm just going to go over like that. Now you can you can make a wrap or two on this if you want, you know, but you don't really need to. I'm just going to bend it with two pairs of pliers, just like that. Bend it round a bit. Some of the plastic comes off; doesn't really matter. And then just snip that off, that's one done, it's never going to pull out, same the other end, straight over, just bend that around, and then, there we go, make sure the swivel's hanging in there, I'll just overlap it that once there, just give it a little tweak, and using the other one, just put a slight kink in it, that's all I need, bend it back again, give me a tag end to snip off, done. All I do now is tie on my line. Okay now I'm using high vis yellow line here. This is just called uh, Storm Fluoro in yellow. It's 30 pound test. I'm rapidly moving away from um, light line for place fishing. I'm just going to spin it on the end of this barrel swivel with a little blood knot and I'm going to keep this length of this pretty short. For I've no more than about a foot because I've noticed you don't need long traces with doing this. Just missed the loop there. You seem to be doing better and catching more fish with a short trace. No idea why, but it doesn't tangle so much. I've got that one loop there, duplicate it the other side, and then I'm just going to show you what else I put on a spoon and a hook. Okay, now look what I've done here. Here's your there's your barrel swivel. It's just going to hang in there perfectly. There is, let's say, we're going to call that 10-12 inches 
or 30 pound mono. The hook at the end to take the ragworm tip with squid. But there's the totally awesome secret ingredient. I've just got a small red bead there. Tied a knot round it and that stops that spinner blade which is a plastic picnic teaspoon. And that flashes around. Now what we're going to be doing is that is one end. And right here down the other end. Exactly the same thing. That's all you need for these place down off Bogner. And they use a technique which we call, well they call it I believe, hopping. Let's put the lead on, which is definitely, definitely keeping things on the move. Now, there is my lead, which you'll notice I've also painted white. So I'm really into high vis. That just hangs down snugly like that. Now, now you can see how it works. That's the lead holding it. Here's my fishing line that goes up to my rod. I've got it up and down. You can see I'm supporting it. It hangs equidistant because I've measured it off. Down one end is 12 inches. Down the other end is 12 inches of trace. And what I found, if you tie those two short, this hook won't tangle around the lead. This hook won't tangle around the lead. The current keeps them all straight down there. So there you go. That is the totally awesome giant spreader boom for place. Well, there you go, Mr. Public. I hope you've enjoyed your uh, consultation. Um, as you can see, one of these should be taken regularly at least once or twice a day. And I'll give you a further prescription here of some coat hanger so you can continue the treatment as you go place fishing. Um, if on the way out you see my secretary, thank you, um, she'll collect £400 off you. Uh, thank you very much indeed. It's been a totally awesome visit. Yes, goodbye Mr Public. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, come again to Dr Pullen and the Totally Awesome Workshop. God, I thought I'd never get rid of him. Now, what I've got to do now, make some more booms, because tomorrow I'm going out with Wayne Combin, a bald high sea drifter. We're going place fishing off Bogner and see if any of this stuff works. Okay, well, not long we've been here, we've done about uh, 10 minutes of drifting, and this is my third place in three drops. Yeah, there's three. This one looks a, definitely a keeper. That's, that's a bit bigger, that one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's a keeper. Nice play. There we go. So, this is a definite X marks the spot. Yes, yeah, well, I knew they were here. There we go. Uh, now, you were saying the last lot you had last week, they were, they're eating better. Why is that? Are they thin in the winter? They, yeah, they, they, they've been spawning, so basically they come in round about sort of March time to feed up. Uh, and um, this this one's got a... Uh, doesn't feel hard actually, but normally they're full of pea mussels, little seed mussels on this particular ground. But it's not clean ground, so it's, it's handy for drifting. This is our second drift now, and um, this is fish number six. So... They're certainly here, we just hope to get into a, a nicer stamp if we can. Well, Wayne's just pinged another mark. We must have had three or four straight away and I've got another one here. Wayne's had a couple of really nice plays. I guess this is the same. Oh, that's different, what's this thing? What the hell is that? Different markings. Well, I don't know, what is it? It's, it's weird. It's a place. You still think it's a place? I think it's a place just with different markings, darker markings. Well, I've never caught one like that before. Absolutely. But you can you can just make out the little dots here, can't you? That is weird. Could be wrong. I could be wrong, but it well, does. I can't think what it is. You can see his head, his eyes, yeah. they all look the same, don't they? There's a place, but long and narrow. But the colour wise, very, very, very dark. <laughs> Tide's ripping up a bit now, so I've got another fish on here. I thought I had another line, but they're, they're still going, they're still biting. We've come up a bit further this time. And the fish is on the on the spoons and the spreader rig's worked again. No tangles luckily. Yeah, that's a dab, Wayne, yeah? Yeah, that's a dab. Quite a nice one. Nice. That, make, that make nice eating as well. A nice as a place? Yeah, yeah, a little bit sweeter. Similar. Yeah. It's place for tea, I'm afraid, so the dab's lucky day is here. 
and he can go back hopefully get the hook out there we go nearly gave him the worm as well don't say I'm not tight I kept the worm yeah nice fish so that one can go back there he goes cool lovely job Well, we've been at anchor about an hour, hour and a half. Wayne's had a place. I think we had a couple of dabs. Been a bit slow and it's absolutely pouring through. So we've got big leads on and the bigger rods. But we got about on a, another hour, hour and a half, I guess, for all the tidies. And we might have another go on the drift. But I've just got that coat hanger rig out. And I've got a double, double dose. I've got a dogfish, which I didn't really want. And it looks like a, a decent sized dab on there as well. So, but a big lead, so that sort of kills the fight. It just goes to show you, even in a heavy tide, there's still a chance of catching something. Oh, oh that's a normal place, I think. That way, is it? That's a place, yeah. Yeah, so we've got a place and a doggy. Put that down there. Now, a little tip for other people, just that I've been told. If you've got shirt sleeves, these will wrap all up here and scratch all your arm. So if you can, just fold the tail around and hold it like that, and then unhook it, either with your fingers, if you can, like that, or the pair of pliers, and that way, his, his tail, which is very, very rough, this. Years ago, you know, they used to strip this skin off and use it for sandpaper for cabinet making, but that's very, very rough. If you get it round here, wait till you go in the shower, you know, the next day, or the same night, probably, if you're covered in fish slime, because it really stings. So there we go, one doggy, back it goes, and a place. So that shows you they're still there at anchor, and there's the old plastic teaspoon. So the hanger rig I've got here was well worth making up, but we've got high hopes for when this tide eases. what it is they like movement these places without question you put a bait down and it might stay there as soon as you start moving it even to bring it in as long as you're in contact with the bottom bouncing bang that's two twice i've moved that rod and twice i've had a there you go twice i've had a fish on once the word gets out that a new muscle bed has been found don't expect to see just one boat on the spot when the place are on the bite, it's not unusual to see up to 50 small boats all getting in on the action. Well, this is why we're here, because uh, these little seed mussels are what the place are feeding on. A lot. And people are, I have heard people say um, they don't know why places are on the mussel beds, they don't eat mussels. Well, they clearly can't be gutting the fish that uh, they're catching, if they're catching them, because uh, they're usually full of these, and these little these size as well, these little tiny seed mussels. Absolutely perfect. And um, the only problem we have around here is uh, starfish. You get hordes of starfish and they decimate these mussels, but that's why the place are here. There you go. Okay, well, that's a nice, get another nice keeper. I think that's probably, uh, well, I'm beginning to lose count of them now, but... That's all 30, I imagine, aren't you, eh? You've had six since we've been anchored. No, this, or is, more. this, this is the um, eighth place. Eighth place, three yeah, dabs, and a dabs, yeah. Three dabs. But really, it's been a fishy drop. I haven't, I haven't bought one bait in that didn't have a fishing on it of some description. So, uh, yeah, we're into them. And uh, he's, he's a lovely fish for the table. Perfect. Nice, nice and plump. Lovely plump fillets on that. Worth the run up here. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're coming for. Good fish. Yeah, it's a better oh, one. Oh, well, yes, yeah, that's a good one. That's a it's one. more like what we come for. It's not, there he is. Again, it's not monstrous, but it's... Uh, well, it's, it's anyway, doing nice so that is a good fish. Yeah, it's a nice place. That is fish of the day. He probably... He'll be, he'll be closer to... 
That is fish of the day. Two and a half pound. I'd say that's closer to three, I reckon, Wayne. That is a beauty. Yeah. It's certainly worth coming all this way for, isn't it? Fish like that, Wayne. Three pound on the nose. Yeah, he looks all every bit of three pound. I'm yeah. surprised actually, he's not bigger. Beautiful, right. Right lovely on, big right fish. On the nose. Three, three pound. Right, we're just going to try try this in real time, really. See if um, how long it takes to hook, hook a place up. Give me a little cast down, a little lob out. Wait till it hits the deck, and then just twitch it back in. And uh, that's all we've been doing prior to that. And it's literally been a fish a drop. So um, we're now about over sixty. Must have been. Yeah, easy. Easy over yeah, sixty. Easy. Yeah. I've had well over, I've had well over thirty myself, and. Uh, so no question that the bouncing, the hopping technique they call it, is absolutely fishing the pants off to static. The, the, the movement, the, the little hop in, the movement, incites them to, to take, definitely, unquestionably. You can have a rod and a holder there, it will pick up fish, but by the time you've had one on the older, if you get this one out, bring it in, twitch it, twitch it, you, you're getting a fish a drop, or well, we have been. Meanwhile, over there, some other guys, are on the drift and I don't think they're doing the same sort of numbers that we're getting seem to be getting on the anchor here and there you go in real time cast out a minute and a half Wayne yeah I suppose so that wasn't that barely that was it yeah and the wind's gone to absolutely nothing stunning day absolutely flat calm as many places I've ever known caught fish to three pounds and we're still not going home. There you go. Here he is, there's the fish. And there you have it. Caught to camera, not yep. many people doing that. Okay, well we've had a, nothing short of a superb day really. We've had a, well over 70 place um, so far and we've still got a bit of the day left. But the one thing we didn't want to see, but we know they're here, are uh, these things. Um, I'm not even sure if they're protected or whatever, but uh, I wouldn't surprise if they are. But what they do is they just go on mass across the mussel beds and leave um, shells behind because uh, they're voracious feeders. And I don't even think it. Um, so I think some people like you know just sort of try to pull their legs off and throw them back as if to think that it doesn't actually uh, it doesn't actually kill them. Sometimes I think they can regenerate. You've got to be very careful with a lot of these creatures because they you do that to them and they release uh, they release eggs and sperm and just <laughs> you'll end up with a lot more of them. I've got a problem around here, Wayne. Yeah, no, go on, stop anyway. I've got a problem. You, you, probably... <laughs> I'm, I'm filming and my rod's about to go over yeah, there. No, you've probably sat... Right, we've had over 80 plates now. And Wayne's had them up to three pounds. He's really came here today. He must have caught, I don't know, nearly bloody three to mine. I'm um, using that hopping method. But I'm finally getting my own back because I've got something different and I think it's a black bream because it's got a sort of rattly fight. But we're just packing up, just about to pull the anchor. Seas flat calm. Fabulous, fabulous evening. Still some other guys up here boat fishing, it's a black bream. If it comes off, nobody's going to believe me, are they? There he is. Lovely, jubbly. And how can you not finish with something different, eh? As if we haven't caught enough place. Beautiful, ow, spiky black bream. Totally awesome days fishing. If you get a chance to run out to one of these muscle bed marks, and there's loads of them all around, just got to find them. We won't be giving them to you, but it's worth it. It's brilliant fishing, and maybe we'll have one more drop, who knows. Until next time, let's put this guy back. Go on, boy. Brilliant. There you go. That's it, that's what you want. <laughs> there you go, have a look up, can't be bad.
Finding a good mussel bed is the secret to great place fishing, but you need to get on them before the commercial boats. And of course, you don't need to keep everything you catch. Why not put some back for future years? They may be a great fish to eat, but they are still a finite resource. There's no question that keeping that bait constantly on the move gets you more fish. Place are a voracious feeder and they quickly attack any small moving baits. Oh yeah, I'd like to put in an order for some more glassy calm days like this please. It's absolutely ideal for the small boat fishermen. Half the fun of chasing this popular flatty is using your boat. You can drift, anchor, cast up tide, change baits, change fishing spots, or if you need to, change days. Scrapper on here. It's not fighting like a place does. A lot more kicks. Possibly a black bream. We've got Wayne over there, he's getting some black bream. And indeed it is a black bream. Yeah. Small one, but we'll have it. Lovely colours in it. Look at that. What a fish. Can we put that one back? Yeah, let's see if it spikes me. Meanwhile, I've got a bite on this one. Just drop that one down to have a sandwich. Go in, good man. Any goes. Good day. The totally awesome place bait is usually a couple of ragworm on the hook, tipped off with a sliver of squid. Those flatfish just can't resist it. And with a shiny plastic teaspoon as an attractor, you better hang on to your rod. Yes, it's tackle test time. Is the incredible coat hanger spreader boom actually gonna catch a fish? Just take a look at how the wire spreader boom stops the two lines tangling and that pulsating flash of my two plastic teaspoons are the ultimate in fishy bling. A strong tie flow can put the place off the feed but we found you could still catch fish by casting across the tide with a ragworm and a tractor spoons then just let it bump round in the current. Okay, so the totally awesome spreader boom actually does catch fish. I love it, two at a time. Bring me that frying pan. Or you can even use them as elbow pads. Well, we're just off Bognor on the mussel beds. 
And as you can see, here's a clump of mussels I've just pulled up from the bottom. This is what the place are after. Huge mussel beds here, plenty of place. We've had about 10 already um, uh, using a hopping technique. Uh, good sized fish as well, decent size, but we've got the weed, it's back. The tide's absolutely ripping through now, but I've had to put a pound of lead on. But I've got a fish on, and I'm assuming it's either a dogfish. So I think the tide might be running too hard for the place. I've got the leader up now. Actually, no, I'll tell you what, it is a place. And it's on that lovely coat hangar reef. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, please. Tell me that doesn't work. Tell me that doesn't work. There's a little spoon. And there's my piece of coat hanger. Wow, just about to take my teeth out with a lid. <laughs> that is a really nice place. And you know what? That's going in one, one place. It's going in the frying pan. That is a beauty. And there could be more to follow once this tide starts to ease off a little bit. So there you go. Just when you think you can't catch a fish, get yourself one of these big giant leads. One of these huge coat hanger spreader booms I've made up, and you still pick up the odd bonus fish. Oh, I've got to get down again. Um, tide's eased a bit now, it's ripping earlier on, and uh, yeah, no bites, just a couple of doggies on the squid. Um, chucked out some baits now, tide slackened off a bit, it's almost slack tide now, and we've got a lunker on here. Good sized fish, it was a good take, the rod went straight over, hooked up straight away. And look at that rod. Decent place here, definitely. One for the frying pan. That's if we can get him in. <laughs> Wayne's just have one over there. Yeah, Wayne's over there. He's just lost a good fish. We're still oh, getting no. this one. Still getting the weed a bit, but fish. I haven't seen oh, him yet. Smooth hound. Oh yeah, smooth hound. That's a nice smooth hound. Oh, well, that's what Wayne had. Yeah. That's a good smooth on there. Plastic teaspoons. Oh, yeah. Smooth hounds love them as well. Fifteen plates were on, dogfish, Mike just had that smooth hound, and we're still fishing. <laughs> 